one iconic feature of the dry west of southern Africa are what appear to be haystacks sitting up in trees. Surprisingly, these big structures are made by one little tiny type of bird. In 1998, fresh out of college, I had been accepted for a job in Namibia as a tour guide. I took an overnight bus all the way up to Vintuk from Cape Town. On my journey, I was going through a lot of country that I'd never been in before. As the dawn rose on that bus, my first morning in Namibia, the thing that I was most excited to see were these haystacks up in the trees. Unfortunately, I had no idea, but there were none along that route. But soon enough, in my time in Namibia, I did manage to see these nests and the little birds that make them, and they've become a pretty cool part of my life. These nests and the birds that make them are really interesting. And so in this video, I'd like to tell you about them. Here's the plan. I'm going to tell you about the birds themselves. Then I'll talk about the nests, how they're made and so on. And then I'll talk a bit about the ecology around the nests. And then finally, once you know a bit about them, I'll share a couple of interesting stories of my experiences with these nests. Right, we'll start with the birds. The birds are called sociable weavers. Their scientific name is Philetarius socius. They belong to a group of birds called weavers. And weavers are seed eaters, of which there are other seed eaters as well. But the weavers are generally very beautifully colored seed eaters that develop really beautiful nests. Sociable weavers are found in the arid regions of southern Africa. If you don't know much about that, you can watch the video linked above that explains a bit about those deserts. Unlike their more colorful relatives from the greener areas, the sociable weavers are more drab in color. However, for desert birds, I think they're pretty attractive. They have a very distinctive chattering call, which to me sounds a little bit like kids squeaky toys. Another important fact is that they're communal birds, they live in large colonies, and that's pretty unusual for desert birds in general. Right, the next thing are the nests. The nests are pretty incredible. These giant, giant haystacks up in trees are pretty amazing structures. When you think of a nest, like this one shown of a thrush with its babies, you think of a place where birds go to breed. And normally birds will use their nests in a breeding season and the next year they've got to build a new one. So nests are not long lasting. But that's not the case with sociable weavers. Their nests are not just for breeding. Their nests are their roosts. They live there all year long. Unlike most other birds, therefore, the sociable weavers are always, always modifying their nests. And when you see a group of sociable weavers foraging, you virtually always see at least one with a grass twig in its mouth that it's going to add to the nest. The lifetime of the nest far, far exceeds the life of a bird, in fact. It has more to do with the tree that they've picked to build their nest in. Some of the hardier trees that they pick will actually last a long time even after the tree is dead, and so the nest will remain until eventually the whole tree falls down. Generally, pieces of nest will break off and fall down, and the birds will just keep rebuilding. In my experience, Pieces of nests will break down often during the rainier years. The structure of the nest is basically a, a big roof. Most of the top of the nest is all just full of material, some of it becoming very matted. And the nest chambers are individual chambers sitting underneath the nest, making it much harder for predators to reach them. Now that you know a bit about the birds and a bit about the nests, let's talk about the ecology. The first thing of interest relating to ecology is about the birds themselves. As I mentioned earlier, they are communal birds. That's very unusual in desert areas, mainly because deserts have less resources, there's less food available. It turns out the nest is their secret to living in colonies. Because the nest acts as a thermal buffer, in other words, when it's very hot, the nest keeps them cooler, when it's very cold, the nest keeps them warm, this reduces the energy requirements of these birds, and so in the areas that they live in, where there's less food available, they manage to survive in a big colony 
by just needing less energy. The other side to their ecology that's really interesting is just everything else that also uses their nests aside from these birds. They are clearly giant structures in places where there's little else and so it's no surprise that many other things use their nests too. The deserts in which these weavers live can at times be very hot. In a hot desert one important thing is that an animal wants to reduce how much water it needs. One way to do that is to simply avoid being in the sun a lot by shade seeking. And so these nests provide a great source of shade, especially for oryx, a very big antelope that lives in these deserts. Another thing is that many other birds in these deserts will use these nests as a cheap and easy nest and just steal a chamber. Often the sociable weavers don't even move out or anything, they just allow these other more dominant birds to take over a chamber. Two notable examples are pygmy falcon and rosy-faced lovebirds. Another thing that's quite interesting is that these are sources of grasses that stick around when most of the grass on the ground has disappeared during the dry seasons. When I first arrived in Namibia I heard that horses eat the nests from time to time. And then I never saw it for years and years. It took me about 15 years before I finally saw it. And then on one trip, during a particularly dry drought, we saw several farms on which horses were eating out of these nests. I've also heard that elephants eat them and several other animals, but so far I've only seen horses. The final thing that I find interesting is just where can these nests exist? These are big haystacks in trees essentially and so the limiting factor on the drier side is just that there isn't enough grass and the birds literally extend up to the edge of the driest areas of the desert to where regions begin where there isn't enough grass for them to build these nests. On the other side it's the humidity. Once, the, once there's too much rain uh, a nest like this simply can't exist because it will start rotting away. As a result, there's a very clearly defined rainfall zone within which nests like this are even possible. Right, let me finish off with just a couple of my own stories re regarding these birds. First of all, the, the first story is really just about witnessing the development of one of these nests. Now these nests can last for hundreds of years because some of these trees are very long lived that they build in. So to see a new nest is, is quite a special thing. But I was quite lucky. A house that I was living in in the desert when I was working at a lodge there had a branch that must have been just suitable. And we watched for years as the sociable weavers would come by stick some sticks and thorn branches and grass on top of the branch and generally with the next wind the the bits that they'd stuck there would be knocked off so it literally took years before something stuck but eventually there was the beginnings of a nest and and once they had a, a, a secure bit around the branch the it didn't take that long for a small nest to, to develop. So that was really interesting to, to witness. Unfortunately, I don't have pictures of it. It happened before the times of cell phones and so on. The second story involves snakes. So if you're not a snake person, I'm gonna put up a couple images of snakes. So skip that if it's not your thing. But uh, I had been out on a game drive in the desert with some guests and it had just been an amazing amazing experience on that same drive we managed to see leopard in the desert which is always very special there was only a handful of times that i ever saw leopard in the desert so that was great but then we also found this nest with a black spitting cobra uh, managing to access the the chambers of the nest and the birds were going fairly mad, but there was very little that they could do about the snake. 
I've seen snakes try before but generally they don't get in it's very hard for them to curl around but from time to time a snake manages to do it the image that I've got is of uh, Cape Cobra but in the case that I'm talking about it was a black spitting cobra a very rare interesting kind of snake thank you so much for watching I hope you found it interesting nature is just incredible if you've got any birds or other animals in the region you live that have an outsized impact on the region. I'd love to know about it. Let me know in the comments.